Okay, let's just jump right in. Okay, so we had a Dasa on from 6 a.m. Oh, actually 5.59, because she thought that prayer started at 6 a.m. So we thank God for you, Adasa, and your zeal. I woke up at five and I'm already hungry. It's seven o'clock and I'm already hungry. And I was like, Lord, I'm already hungry. And the day hasn't even started yet. So I don't know who else is with me, but we're going to defeat our flesh today. We're going to defeat our flesh today. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, our focus of the month, as everyone knows, is wedding planning. And first of all, let me just make sure everyone can hear me good. Can you hear me good? Okay, good. Okay, so we the focus of the month is wedding planning, um, but this this is already deviated. <laughs> so we'll just jump right in. So we are in the parable of the ten virgins. So it sounded like we were on course because it's about a wedding. But anyway, let's just jump right in. So we're in Matthew twenty five, reading verse one to thirteen. Matthew twenty five, verse one to thirteen. And I'm reading from the NIV version. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who already went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Listen, if the Lord said, I don't know you, Zemi, or he wouldn't even say my name. I don't know you. I would just break down balling. Whew, I couldn't take it. Anyway, so let's jump into my observation. So everyone was asleep. Everyone was asleep. And we don't normally stay there. We normally focus on the oil, which I will as well. But everyone was asleep. And that really stood out to me. So the bridegroom took longer than expected to come. And all of the virgins fell asleep. So I used to look at this as harmless beauty sleep. Like, oh, they just sleep in. You know, it took a while. They decided to rest their eyes. You know, we used to say rest our eyes before he came to make sure they were fresh. But then I thought about it, you know, in this context and, and about being ready. And their sleep and the fact that they were sleeping was not ideal. And it was especially not ideal for those who were not prepared. So for those who were, who were prepared, who had the extra oil, of course you could go to sleep. You have everything that you need. You just have to wake up, trim your lamp and go, you ready, you, the door is open to you. But for the foolish or the unprepared, because I don't want to call anybody a fool, for the unprepared, you should not sleep. You should not wait and sleep. Sleeping is not something you should do as an unprepared person. Because they could have used that time when everyone was sleeping to say, okay, I may not have enough oil. Let me go and buy some oil. And so that's why they ended up being called foolish, because they did not use their time wisely if they had used that time wisely if they had not been asleep and if they had decided to use that waiting period to do something else to go buy oil they would have been ready they would have been in that room the door would not have been shut on them and already i know this word is speaking to somebody because you need to get ready so when i was thinking about this and the reason i got up early myself was the lord was taking me to gethsemane to another group of people who fell asleep. And so I wanna go there as well. It's just literally the next chapter over, which is amazing. So we go into Matthew 26, Matthew 26, reading from verse 39. And so Jesus goes into the garden of Gethsemane. He's there with Peter and two sons of Zebedee. So going a little further, he, meaning Jesus, fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, 
If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you keep men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray, he is saying. Instead of being asleep, this is how he's telling people to wait. Watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. And we love to say we woke. Or people love to say they use the term woke, but are we really woke? Are we really watching and praying so that we're not falling into temptation? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and he prayed. And then he said, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away from me, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time saying the same thing. Then he returned to the, the, to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. Look, the hour has come. And then I decided, you guys, I decided to look up what Gethsemane means. And I almost fell out. Gethsemane means oil press or a vat of oil. The virgins who were asleep, all of them were asleep, and that whole story is contextualized around oil, right? These people who didn't have their oil. And Gethsemane is the oil press, the place where we press to get the oil, the oil press. They were sleeping in a place where they should have been pressing their oil. They should have been praying and interceding in the Holy Spirit. They were in the garden of Gethsemane, the garden of the oil press. But they weren't using their oil. They weren't interceding in the Holy Spirit. Don't sleep on your oil. Don't sleep when you should be pressing. And I have a declaration for you for 2022. And I know a lot of you, God wakes you up out of your sleep to say, come pray with me. He wants you to come into his presence. And a lot of times you say, give me a few more minutes, Lord. Give me a few more minutes, Lord. I just need some extra sleep. Not this year, honey. Not this year. When the Lord comes to your bedside and when you feel like you can't sleep and when you know it's the Lord waking you up, get up and pray. And if you're like, I don't know what to pray about. What I need you to do is I need you to intercede on behalf of other people. That's where the power is. When you intercede on behalf of others, you may say, I don't know what to pray over myself. You're not supposed to be praying over yourself at that hour. When God wakes you up, it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. That is a time of intercession when you pray over people, when you pray over nations, when you pray over governments. You can't say, I don't know what to pray. You cannot say, I don't know what to pray. You have a prime minister. If depending on where you are, you have a president. Start there. Pray for your family. Pray for the nation. Don't sleep on your oil. Don't sleep when you should be pressing. Don't sleep when you should be preparing. This is not the season to wait and sleep. Now, you may think the brides were justified. They were waiting a long time for God's sake. The man came at midnight. But also the disciples could feel justified. Jesus had just fed them the last supper. I just ate Jesus. Of course I sleep in. You could, you could, you could always place justification in the mix. In the mix, sorry. But you could still be called foolish. And you could still not be ready. And you could still be in a place where you should be pressing and not pressing. We don't know what the prayers of the disciples would have done. We know Jesus had to die, but we don't know how that day would have looked, how they prayed. We don't know. And so just going back to um, the virgins, the foolish versus wise. So, and this is a painful message for some, virginity isn't enough. Virginity wasn't enough. Purity wasn't enough. And I know a lot of people lord virginity up. Um, and when I say lord virginity up, I... Purity, of course, is the standard. What I mean is some virgins think that they are better than others because of their virginity. What if everyone was virgins? You could still be in two, there's two separate categories that are still wise and foolish. Purity isn't enough. Virginity is not enough. Although I would strongly suggest that anybody who is still a virgin in 2022, hold on. 
hold on and keep it. This is a year to be so inclined with God's agenda. I wouldn't even, I would take great care not to step out of alignment this year in any way. If I was sinful in a particular area, I would say, Lord, please help me deal with that area because I wouldn't want to be out of alignment at all in this year. So if you are a virgin, I would say, hold on and keep pressing unless God sends you your spouse. Don't give it up just for anybody. Hold your virginity. But let's go back to the text. So virginity wasn't enough. Purity wasn't enough. Being a good person wasn't enough. Having good intentions won't be enough. Where is your oil? And the oil stands for the Holy Spirit. The oil stands for obviously your anointing. And the oil stands for God's presence. I am a good person. I am a Christian even. But some Christians do not have the Spirit of God. Some Christians don't operate in the Holy Spirit. Some Christians have not submitted their lives to Jesus Christ. No one can enter heaven without being born of water and spirit. That's John 3, verse 5. And what does it mean to be born of the Spirit? You have put your faith in Jesus Christ to accept the gift of salvation and you walk in your new life. And I think that's where a lot of us get tripped up, where we think that we could just cloak on salvation over our old lives. Like I could still sleep with my boyfriend because I saved, because I have salvation. I have the gift of salvation. I could still do that because all I have to do is say a prayer and I'm forgiven. And if I die today, I could enter the kingdom of heaven. I could still go and carry on lying and cussing and doing all these things because of salvation. I could ask for forgiveness and I'll be forgiven. We put the cloak of salvation over our lives instead of operating in a new life, instead of dying to flesh, instead of casting away what is old and putting on what is new. We want to operate in the old life and just put the cloak of salvation over it. Oh, God knows who I am. I was born this way. That's not enough. That is not enough. That's not walking in your new life. That's not dying to your flesh daily. That's not taking up your cross. That's not walking in the spirit. Again, I ask you, where is your oil? Where is your oil? And we know there are gifts of the Holy Spirit and then gifts and then the fruit of the spirit. And I want to say the fruit is more important than the gift, but let's go there as well. So we are... We are in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. And we are, what we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. This is what we speak, not in word taught, the words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments for who has known the mind of God as to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And moving on, still in 1 Corinthians to verse to chapter 12, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading 1 to 11. Now about the gifts of the spirit. How do you know you operate in the spirit? So we have gifts and we also talk, going to talk about the fruit. Now about the gifts of the spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know, when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says Jesus is cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given the spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of, of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, 
to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these things are work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So if you want some spiritual gifts, some gifts of the spirit, that's where you're gonna pray into 1 Corinthians 12. Now we're gonna go into Galatians to talk about, I just want you to know evidence of the spirit in me. So we go into Galatians 5, a lot of people know this, but I have here walk with your oil. So I say walk by the spirit, walk with your oil, walk with your oil. Verse 16, so I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, that sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's those who will say, I never, God will say, I never knew you. But the spirit of, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Someone said Galatians 5 was God was how God was dealing with me this morning. Amen. And I love this line here. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So I ask you again, where is your oil? Where is your oil? Those who went to buy the oil tried to manufacture the presence of God. They, you cannot tap into someone else's anointing. And a lot of people do that. They you join sometimes people join prayer lines, even this prayer line to tap into an anointing. They may join, they may go to certain events to tap into an anointing. You be around certain people, you keep company with certain certain people to tap into an anointing, to try to manufacture God's presence. When that is what you should have within you going where you go. There are some people, I bet you, as soon as the person came onto this live, that's when I started to cry. Because they are carrying the spirit of God with them instead of waiting to get some to pull from somebody else and we can't be no one on this line should be like that to be pulling from somebody else when i need to have my own oil i need to have the presence of god in me i need to have the fruit of the spirit operating in me where is your oil and so to to recap be ready for the bridegroom prepare now accept salvation i know a lot of people that's that's baseline that's already what we've done. Accept Jesus, walk in your new life. A lot of people haven't done that yet. They accepted salvation, but they just went back to their old lives and they put a prayer on it. They put some grace on it. They put some mercy on it, but you need to walk in your new life. Develop the fruit of the spirit and operate in your spiritual gifts. Be a ready bride, no matter when the bridegroom comes. Be a ready bride. Some of you can't afford to be asleep. You got to wake up. And we saw in Deborah, arise, 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 arise. It is time to arise and shine. And that was what I called my alarm this morning. Arise and shine to be a ready bride. And so I am just going to pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word today, oh God. I thank you that we, your church, We'll be ready for your coming, oh God. We'll be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We will be ready for the promise, the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We will be ready and we will be known by you, oh God. I pray that every single woman, every single family, every single person represented by this line, that they will be ready, that we will be a spotless bride to Heavenly Father. I thank you that there is not only oil in our lamps now, but there is oil in our jars for later, that we will wait well that we are women who will wait well, that we are women who will not abuse your grace, who will not abuse your mercy, oh God, but we are women who will press in, 
who will press in, who will intercede, who will say, I can't live like I used to live because the assignment is greater. The cost is too great. The cost of your disappointment is too great. The cost of you not knowing my name is too great. The cost of you saying you don't know me is too great. And we won't sacrifice that anymore. That we will cast out the old wine and the old wine skins, and we will allow you to make us new, that we are women who die to our flesh daily. And I pray that you will grace us for that, oh God. Grace us in that in the midst of it, oh God. Grace us to help us to go back to the basics of our faith. Teach us how to love you. Teach us how to serve you, dear Heavenly Father. We repent of all of our sins, known and unknown. We repent for words spoken. We repent for words that we were supposed to speak, but we did not speak, dear God. And we pray that you will anoint us afresh. That oil, that your spiritual oil will pour down from our foreheads, oh God. Your anointing oil will pour upon us. Your oil of protection will pour upon us. The oil of your presence will fall upon us. That you will, your presence will follow these women and that you will greet them in their bedrooms, in the shower, in the car, in the classroom, oh God. Even when they wait on the bank line, that your spirit will be just so great wherever they go. That they will carry your spirit, your presence with them that these are women who will change the game. And doors are just opening for these women, oh God. Doors are opening for these women to walk into an influence. And I pray that you will prepare them and equip them, dear Heavenly Father, that their mantles are great, but you are great. And what they cannot carry, you can carry for them. And I pray that these are women who know how to cast their cares unto you. Women who know how to cast their cares unto the Lord. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for opening up their minds today, oh God, that they understand more than ever before that this is not a time to sleep. This is a time to get up and arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon these people. Though darkness covers the earth and there's a thick darkness over the people, yet your light has come. Your light has come and we need to arise. I thank you for your word, oh God. I thank you for the gift of your Bible. I thank you that it is alive today. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, considering it a blessing, considering it his duty, considering it his love for us to die and shed his blood. We thank you for the blood of our Lord, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for the opportunity as women to even have this moment to come and intercede. We thank you that you are for women. We thank you that you are a God who has set an example of loving and caring for and seeing and understanding and healing and using women. And I pray that women arise, oh God, and as we arise, you give us people to come alongside of us, oh God. That even though we are women and you are calling us up to a higher level, that we are also help meets. And I pray, oh God, that you will allow our husbands, our future husbands to rise up and also just like, just like Deborah said to Barack, arise, Barack, arise, that the leaders in them will arise, dear God, that the leaders and our husbands will arise. A lot of husbands need to come from out of the background, mine included, because that is not where, that's where they operate well. That's their comfort zone. It feels good. They know how to serve us. They know how to push us, but they need to come from out of the background because you, oh God, have greater for them. And I pray, oh God, that you will just touch them even now. Touch them even now. Equip them even now that they will dream again, that you will heal their hearts, the things they can't tell their wives, that you will heal their hearts, heal them deeply and truly so that they can take up the mantle that they have to take up so they can walk swiftly before you, that you put new words on their tongue, that you allow them to have visions and dreams again, that you give them prof prophetic words for their families, for their wives, for their children, that they are graced with wisdom, that they don't commit violence against their wives, that they don't bring down generational curses because of lack of self-control, but that they operate in the spirit of God that they are faithful, that they are kind, that they are good, that they are self-controlled, they are patient to help me, Father. I pray that the spirit of the most high God will rest upon them. 
rest upon them and diffuse into them even now, that you will call them forth out of the shadows and into your marvelous light. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who are petitioning for their fathers even now, their earthly biological fathers. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that their latter days will be greater than their former days where they left Christ in the past, oh God. They, I pray that the fathers will arise, that the fathers will arise, that it is not too late for them to pick up their cross and follow after you. It is not too late for fathers. And I pray for every single woman who is petitioning for their father. The Lord has heard you. The Lord has heard you, Lord. Keep him safe. Keep him healed. Allow him to be free of infirmity and sickness and disease. Allow him to be free from premature death. Allow him to live, live abundantly. To call the name of Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. We pray for fathers to Heavenly Father that they will taste the gift of salvation while there is yet time. I pray for those who are preparing for marriage. I pray that they are, they are surrounded by women who have happy, healthy marriages, that they have examples of godly marriages around them. I pray that you will continue to minister to their hearts, to Heavenly Father, heal them from their hurts, and allow them to transition well. Allow them to prepare for being a wife. Not just the white wedding, not just that one day, but being a wife and everything that comes along with that. Soften their hearts, allow them to learn how to communicate. Free them from pain. Allow them to learn how to serve with gladness. Refresh their wombs, open up their wombs to Heavenly Father to receive seed guide and protect them, give them wisdom and discernment to know just what it is that he, to even foresee a need and just step in that place. And I pray that it is, it is reciprocated for them, oh God, to so just as they prepare to be ready for their groom, that their groom is being prepared to be ready for them, that more men are being prepared for marriage. More men are being prepared for marriage. We have men who don't even wanna prepare for a wedding. We have men who aren't preparing for marriage, but Lord, may that be things of the past. May your men arise and become kingdom men who understand the significance of marriage, who don't make mistakes in their first few years of marriage because they're still trying to figure it out, who aren't cheating in their first few years of marriage because they don't know how to be a husband, but Lord, that you are teaching them and preparing them and equipping them and healing them even now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for those who have eaten bitter fruit in marriage. I pray for those who want to leave their marriages, dear God. I pray for those who are hurting because of the betrayal they have experienced in marriage. I pray for those who are mad at you, oh God, for what they have experienced in a union that they thought would protect them. And I pray that you minister to their hurts to Heavenly Father, that they know that they are seen by you and loved by you, that there is greater on the other side, that there is light at the other side of the tunnel, that there is a purpose in everything, even the painful moments of our lives. And you just need to, if you need a, a reference for that, ask Jesus. Ask Jesus how he faced such pain, how he was able to lay down his life, how he felt like he was being crucified without cause. Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus for encouragement. Ask Jesus. I pray for those who are in health, healthy, happy marriages, Lord, who feel so blessed to be so in love even years later. I thank you for that blessing, the Heavenly Father. I thank you for that blessing. May you seal it in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will protect every stem on every single side, protect their children, their future children. Oh God, protect their bank accounts, protect their homes, protect their cars, protect even the wheels, the Heavenly Father. 
And I pray that you would guide and keep them, that we will flourish in every good thing, dear God. I pray for flourishing, just flourishing, just flourishing, just overflow. Vats that overflow with new oil and new wine, new oil and new wine, just gushing out, just gushing out. I pray that that is what we will be known for, just overflowing, overflowing with new oil, new wine, fresh oil. That we are renewed in spirit, dear God. I bless your mighty name. I thank you. I thank you, dear God. Amen. Amen. I don't know if we have any specific prayer requests today. I'm going to play for Techie and Kiana. The Heavenly Father, I thank you for Techie's life, oh God. I thank you that you have brought her here today. I thank you that she is just at the well that she is at the well, dear God, and all she needs to do is throw her bucket down. Throw her bucket down to get that living water. Throw her bucket down to get the water so that she will not thirst again. And Techie, you are right there. You are right there. You have access. And all you need to do is throw your bucket down. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you will reveal that to her and just minister that word unto her, dear God, that you will heal her so completely, so completely that you give her grace and the ability to pull that water up to God, to pull out what it is that she needs. Techie, I, the, everything you need is on the inside of you. You pull in from the inside. This is an external resource. You pull in from the inside, from the inside. And dear God, I pray that you will allow her to bring everything up out of her that needs to come out, that she will overflow with water, living water. Amen. Pray for Kiana. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for your daughter, Kiana. I pray for her heart, dear God. I pray for her mind. I pray for her as she overcomes as she learns how to forgive the sting of of hurts i don't know if it's betrayal but it's it's not a it's not a strong hurt anymore so this may be a long time ago but it still hurts you and i pray that god allows you to forgive that he continues to teach you how to forgive every day forgive kiana every single day and although there still may be pain and triggers i pray that god will grace you for the journey ahead that he'll continue to guide you and order your steps. That you're going to get to the other side of this. That God only wants, he doesn't want to do this to you to make it painful for you. But because there's something on the other side of your forgiveness, you can't get there with bitterness. You can't get there with this pain lingering. There's something else you need to do. Well, you can't go there with unforgiveness. And so I pray that God graces you to forgive and that you do it daily. Daily. Daily, daily, daily. As soon as the thought pops up, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. And you're going to feel that just burden just coming away. That burden just falling away from you. Amen. Corral, like God will continue to reveal what he desires for you to work on during the season. But I thank you for Corral. I thank you for how productive she is, oh God. I thank you for all that she does for your kingdom and in your kingdom. I thank you for all of the gifts that you stirred up in her dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for her creativity, her innovation. I pray that you would give her clarity on the next steps. And I pray, Corel, like, I. It's like it's saying, don't hide behind productivity. Don't hide behind productivity. I feel like I can just like feel that you need to cry.
I pray for your peace. I pray that you are surrounded by people who could give you a really good hug today. You know, you feel like a lot of people don't understand that you, what you're still going through and the pain that you carry. And I pray that God sends people who understand you, who understands that level of grief and that level of pain. And I pray he sends you people who see you past what you create, past what you produce, past what you present, but that they see you and that they love on you. I pray for people who just come and love on you. Just love on you. They don't have to say anything, but just show you love and show you that you are seen beyond what it is that you present to the world. I pray that for you. Amen. That God would prepare me for the assignment. God would prepare me. So um, Carol says, Bam, I'm hearing the same for, thing for Creel, rest in the nothingness, lean into having a, not having a next step, not a season of to work on anything, but to be filled, amen. That God would prepare me for the assignment and not just the opportunity, that God would help me to grow, to know the difference, that God will fill his yearning in my spirit and reveal my purpose. Amen. So I'll just say corporately, Knowing your purpose isn't that important this year. Knowing God's purpose, knowing what God is doing in this season is way more important. Okay, because this year, and I've said it already across my platforms, this year isn't about fulfilling our assignment, our agenda, fulfilling our, all these goals that we have. This year is about partnering with God and what it is that he's doing in the earth. There's something great that God is doing and we need to be able to move and we need to be able to prepare. And so your purpose, my individual purpose, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I partner with God and what it is that he's doing. So I pray that you will hear the voice of God, that you will be able to discern his voice, and that when he asks you to do something, when he ushers you to do something, that you will obey him no matter how stupid it sounds, no matter how simple it may seem, that you will obey him, that you will be grafted in that you will take on the duty of fulfilling the works of the Lord, that you will be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. That we aren't women who seek purpose, but we are women who say, Lord, what is it that you are doing? May I partner with you? And how can I partner with you in this? That we don't miss the move of God. That we are able to partner with God. I don't want you women to just witness what God is doing in the lives of others. I want you to be able to be a part of what God is doing. And it's a difference. There is a difference. And I pray that that would quiet the hearts of so many that I don't need to know what I need to be, what I need to do, what I need to seek. All I need to know is that, Lord, my ears are open unto the voice of your spirit. Hallelujah. My spiritual eyes are open. You have unloosed my tongue. You have unloosed my tongue that I am operating in the fruit of the spirit that I have the gifts, whatever gift of the spirit it is that you have for me, that I'll press into that, that you'll even abound and give me more gifts of the spirit so that I can partner with you in your mission on the earth. That's it, ladies. We don't need to seek anything. We just need to be open and available. Amen. Hands and feet, we, wait to part we want to partner with you, Lord. I mean, let's look at the chat. That God will grant me more clarity in assuming his identity for me to be poured into and filled. Don't worry about the business of Martha Sinner's feet and let him love on and fill you. That God will grant me more clarity in assuming his identity for me. More clarity in assuming his identity for me. More 
Okay, I'm gonna pray into that more. But anyone else, she's asking for clarity in clarity in assuming his identity for me, his identity for me. I pray that you see how simple that is and how you may be overcomplicating that, how simple that is and how you may be overcomplicating that. And I pray that for you, logic, it just comes down a level, that you are very logical, rational, but that that comes down a level and you operate in this, this gifting of just a knowing with the Lord. And logic is second to that, that you have godly wisdom. And human logic is second to that. The word says that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so human logic takes second place to the thoughts of God, to what the spirit of God, that knowing that the scripture talk about when we have the spirit of God and there's things that we understand in a different way because of that. So I pray that logic steps down in your life and that you begin to see things through the eyes of the spirit, that your spiritual eyes will be awakened, that your life will be transformed through that awakening. Amen. Now I would identity read his word, any part of it, anytime you need to ask Holy Spirit to reveal how what you read relates to who you are as God's daughter. I just started singing the song, Fill Me Up, Lord. If you could drop that in the chat, I will sing it. I will not sing it. I can't sing you guys. I will drop it in the chat. And today I would just ask if someone would like to close in prayer to seal this up for me. The Lord is leading you. And I just want you guys to also practice opening up your mouth. Don't let the enemy silence you. Don't let the enemy silence you. Only God no, alone, all knowing in this year. Anyone would like to come on and pray and close us out? I'll pray. <clears throat> Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for the fifth day of January, the beginning of a new year, 2022. But Lord, it's a new calendar year, but you are the same God every day, every year. And Father, as your daughters, we come to you and we say, we want to please you. And God, I hear the hearts of these women. And I know that, like me, they have been told that it's what we do, that, that we have to work for you. But God, I just want to say out loud the message that you have been giving to me is not what we do, it's who we are. And Father, I just pray that each of us, as we go throughout this day of fasting, as we go throughout this month, as we go throughout this year and the rest of our lives, that we will come to the place of knowing that relationship with you is more important than the things that we do for you. May we rest in knowing that you delight in spending time with us. You can only be a ready bride and not bride for a, hus for a human husband, but a ready bride of Christ when you are intimate with the Lord. And you can only be intimate with the Lord when we are close to you, when we spend time with you, time in your word, time in your presence, time sitting at your feet, not trying to do, not trying to do. Help us, Lord, to release productivity. <laughs> As a recovering overachiever and planner, and I just have to be in my purpose and busy. Lord, I, I declare over all of us who suffer from this because we are women and we know how to do and get it done make things happen. And God is saying, lay it down. So Father, help us to lay it down. Help us to lay it down. Father, every time we feel like I should be doing more, I invite your Holy Spirit to, to tap us, to nudge us, to remind us, no, it's okay, rest. It's okay, rest. It's okay, rest. 
as I read in Genesis this morning, um, Isaac, no, Jacob, Jacob planted seed. I think it was Jacob. Jacob or Isaac, one of them, planted the seed. That wasn't the point. You blessed it. He didn't do, and it wasn't like, it wasn't no fancy seed. It wasn't money. It was because he was a farmer. He just did what he was supposed to be doing. So help us to know that whatever we are doing in this season, whether we are self-employed, a wife, a mother, a homemaker, a broadcaster, a journalist, a banker, an insurance person, whatever it is, just show up in excellence right where we are. Cook the food, wash the dishes, answer the phone, send an email, whatever it is, and you will bless what we do because you are with us. Maybe not try to be extra, just be. Thank you, Lord, for your message. May we press the oil that is in us. Press the oil that's in us. We already have everything that we need. May we press the oil that is already within us. We have the Holy Spirit. May we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. May we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. May we be so in tune to your voice, Lord, that we hear the advice that you are giving louder than the advice of the world that says, do more, be more, be great. We are already great because we're God's. We are already great because we are yours. We are yours. And I thank you that we are yours. I thank you that we are enough. I thank you that you love us unconditionally. We cannot do anything more to earn your love. I thank you that we are free to be who you created us to be. I thank you that we know that we are enough. Single, married, widowed, divorced, separated, children, no children, we are enough. Maybe partner with you to fulfill everything that you have us here for, to go through each season that you have already preordained for us. Maybe just walk the path with you, not look too far ahead, not dwell too much on the past, but just walk steadily, step by step with you. Bless us, Lord. To those of us who have committed to fast today, may you help us to deny our flesh, press into the oil, and enjoy your presence and be strengthened in our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.